Oh, welcome everybody. As a special Thanksgiving treat, which I now regret, um, we are going to go through and rewatch our first ever podcast and react to what I'm sure will be only slightly embarrassing. And the Unabomber is going to join us tonight. <laughs> it's just to keep my headphones together because apparently this one member of the things like kind of broken. Yeah. Yeah. But, I but broke anyway. it. <laughs> I broke it on the Halloween episode, but, uh, yeah. So anyway, we are, uh, this podcast is brought to you by Stevie Wicks. We'll talk about them a little bit later. And without further ado, we will get started with the uh, podcast. Damn time. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> We're so popular. We are. All right. So I, what did I do with my phone? I'm keeping an eye on Facebook stuff on that. Dude, I missed that setup. Right. It was a fun setup. Very conversational. Yeah, I kind of like sitting across from each other. <laughs> I don't know. Let's find out. <clears throat> I'm sorry. It's just so funny. Oh, the Bill Clinton blue dress. Yeah. Well, you got you got to start the blue dress painting. Otherwise, it's gonna come up with modular and pizza. Blue wall. <laughs> Did you ever look up Blue Waffle? I like that. I the auto no. Wait, what? My, my mind went to something dirty. See, the problem is I got to get up here. Oh my gosh, man. Blow my eardrums out there, buddy. There he is. <laughs> that, my friends, is our, prex, our ex-president. This uh, Former. Former. feedback is killing me. That right there is... If that's true, and I believe it was on Joe Rogan's podcast, I heard that, that it was hanging in that house. I know it's Jeffrey Epstein's painting. Um, and he made the point, he said, that that thing's hanging in your house. When you have an ex-president come into that house, that is the ultimate symbol of, I have you by the nuts. Like, you can't touch me. Well, he didn't want to touch him. You know He's too I mean, old. Though. You know what I mean? So my headphones in the video are actually, the microphone is picking up the audio from the headphones. I can't stop, I can't stop looking at it. I know, well, I mean, he is pointing. <laughs> I've lost my entire train of thought. I can't even speak now. It's hard to think when you're looking at that. And I mean, especially with the red well, shoes. He's not pointing at you, he's pointing to me. No, I think that's one of those paintings where it's pointing to wherever you're at. No, he's pointing to me. Well, yeah. But anyway, Epstein. Keeps you sharp between the um, ears. Are we live? Yeah, we're live. <laughs> oh. Starting a trend. That's that's why I'm like, I'm mad because I'm like, I'm blanking here. Oh, because right I now? Oh, well, I didn't know we were live. Like, because we had oh, yeah. a point. Yeah, we got... I say just leave Clinton right there for now. <laughs> <laughs> just to unnerve. Just to unnerve some people in the audience. I, I still can't just like I can't handle that. That's beyond creepy. Like that's. I have to believe that at some point Bill Clinton wore a blue dress. Oh yeah. I mean I have to. It just seems so obvious. I mean, with his wife having bigger genitalia than him, she made him. <laughs> I wouldn't go in there, but. <laughs> That's more like <laughs> I Barack there. Obama and Michelle. Yeah, what do we got? <clears throat> oh, well, I thought we talked about, first we were going to say kind of like what we wanted to happen, but then what we think we're going to happen as far as uh, the election goes. Oh, yeah. I'm curious to hear your opinion on that. Well, obviously, I, I, don't, I don't think Biden's going to win because the thing is he just lost, uh, I'm pretty sure he just lost what is it? Support of the radical left because well, how wrong was I? Ooh, ooh, wrong. The, the radical left is first and foremost anti-Trump. Yeah, right. but the thing is, and how right you were right yeah, there. I know. Oh, I'm not gonna vote for him. See, I think it comes down to how they actually handle the voting. If they allow <coughs> the um, mail-in ballots. Well, not even mail-in because there's a there's a distinction I want to draw later because the whole mail-in ballots thing is okay. Well, that didn't. 
That was probably one of the first instances of I told you sh- I told you so on this podcast, or we told you so rather, was that bit about the radical. Like I, I don't know why I saw it so clear. Well, I know why I saw it so clearly because you listen to anybody on the left talk back then. It's priority number one was no Trump. You know that was it. So yep, that was uh, that was what most people uh, ran on. You know, e- e- even uh, even lower. You know, who's the uh, judge that's uh, presiding over the case for Trump? I don't even she, remember. Uh, but but yeah, Lynch uh, is she, it or Jackson she, or Jones? Yeah, or, I, yeah. I think it, I think it's Jackson. But she ran on basically Trump. So it's like, well, know. yeah, so many so many candidates, and even on both sides to a certain extent, ran on. Uh, anti-Trump and unfortunately it worked but I cannot believe how boring this is right out of the gate we got so much better yeah it, it was pretty bad you know but the there was some funny quips to it though you know to get through the bullshit this is even this is an example of the Democrats using COVID as an opportunity because they know they looked at the last election and they know that voter turnout is not was definitely not in their favor now, I think it's going to spike. I think it was going to spike this election because of the anti-Trump sentiment, but then COVID happened. And if you look at it, it's pretty obvious that people on the left are more cautious about COVID than people on the right, statistically. Obviously. Yeah, I know. Obviously. But people on the right are, and this isn't a blanket statement, but people on the right tend to be very almost militant about making sure they get out. God, that echo, man. This is every election. Yeah, once I put the headphones down, it goes away. Like every Republican I've ever met is always like, they got a game plan for election day. It's like, I'm going to wake up at 5 o'clock. That echoes annoying as shit. Work. It's because of how I'm holding the yeah. headphones. You know, it's like, I'm going to wake up at 5 o'clock and be there at the polls and get my voting done, and then they go off on their merry way. I hardly ever, I don't think I've ever heard a Republican complain about it. It's like, oh, the lines at the polls were so long, and I just left. I don't think I've ever heard a Republican say that. No. I still agree with that. Like, okay, we're gonna to this day, I still haven't heard that. Before they open, and then we're going to wait at the door, because that's what I do. I don't vote Republican necessarily. But. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Uh, straight ticket voters, I think they're just dumb. Okay. Baseball game, dude. It it does, really. And cool Can't thing is, though, uh, he's ever since he got sick and started feeling better and then got sick again, but the first go around, he just will not leave me alone. I would say it's annoying, but considering. And then imagine my surprise. Somebody has taken issue with what I said about Vivek. Of course. Yeah, I'm just like, he's, I'm going to read you this. So for those of you that are watching this podcast, (laughs) false. I love it when they started off with false. Like he thinks he's Dwight Schrute. Your opening line, quote, Vivek invokes the Christian sense of God very, very often. Does he not? I mean, tell me if I'm wrong, literally. But do you remember when I told you that Vivek was Hindu and you were legitimately surprised? Yeah, because it didn't seem correct. Gee, I wonder why. Maybe it's because Vivek is using language that has a Christian frame. And I'm not, I mean, I I am saying it's disingenuous, but... I'm not saying that it's a bad thing. I'm saying it's very political and he knows what he's doing, but I'm saying it's fruitless because once in it's funny because our country has short term memory loss and this guy, I'm going to finish his comment. And then it's, I invite you to look at Vivek's statement on how he thinks these things are not Christian or Hindu from his appearance in Iowa two days ago. Well, let me ask you this. If this man is religious and truly religious, then why is he equating Christianity and Hinduism? That would be like your local pastor being like, well, you know, Jesus is cool and all that, but you know who's really awesome? Vishnu. <laughs> you know, it's... Yeah, that would, that would be an issue from Vishnu. And you would think, again, I don't, I don't know, but I would assume, I mean, I saw Life of Pi, I would assume that a Hindu family with their son coming home and being like, you know who's awesome? JC. I, I think they might have some minor issues, but anyway, and then this is my 
uh, his parents and I are to, instead of thinking, quote, I've only heard these ideas in the context of Christianity, therefore Vivek is using Christian ideas. First of all, making a lot of assumptions here, guy. Making a lot of assumptions right now. And second, this is my favorite, I expect you to read the Iran about Indic religions and philosophical thought that deeply impacted the Greeks, as did Zoroastrianism, and both of these find themselves well represented in Christianity centuries later. Comparing Hinduism and Zoroastrianism is kind of like comparing Judaism and Islam. I mean, they're... Well, no, that's not... That's even too good of a question. That's like comparing Judaism and Shinto. Like, no. I mean, they're not... Did he say the Iran? Ir, ir, Iran. Was he meaning the Quran? No, no. Um, but, but both these find themselves well represented in Christianity centuries later. I mean, yeah, just in the sense that Christianity borrows the duality between good and evil from Zoroastrianism, because newsflash, asswipe, I have actually researched other religions. It was actually part of my confirmation and my collegiate career, so fuck you, you pretentious ass. And I'm tired of these hippy-dippy fucks all saying shit, like my aunt does this, and it pisses me off. They're like, well... You know, there was that period in Jesus' life that's not documented. Actually, it was documented. It just wasn't put into the religious canon. But let's meander down this road. Well, Jesus actually traveled to India and learned from yogis and Buddhists. No, he fucking did not. Isn't that like a long way away? Uh, it's not It's not as far as you think it would be, but... Walking? Yeah, well, yeah, walking, it's a long way, yeah. But, I mean, li- he, he, have planes then. Well, he likely he likely would have traveled through a caravan. But, anyway. It would have taken him 33 years. But I, I'm, I'm really, and this is kind of, it's ironic because this guy is doing exactly what Vivek's doing, except Vivek is doing it for political reasons. This guy's doing it for pseudo-intellectualism. It, it, like, yes, these things are all very, very loosely connected. But to say that Hinduism influenced the Greek pantheon, which would later give way to... Greek philosophy, which did influence early Christianity to a point, and later Islam, is just not, they're not that deeply connected. And I even say in the shortened question, like, I don't know Vivek's particular beliefs. I'm going based upon what he says and how he's saying it. And the retort I actually gave him, I was like, do you honestly believe that Vivek expects the average American to have done that amount of comparative religion research? Or maybe he's intentionally using words, phrases, and ideas because he knows they will resonate with the evangelical right. And point after point, not just you, I've seen people on the news talking to Vivek and heard other people be like, wait, Vivek's not a Christian? Because the way he was talking, I just assumed he was. He sounded like one. Very much so. Yeah, he you know? kind of confused me. I was just like, and then you told me, I'm like, what? Yeah, he confused me too, because when I heard somebody say he was Hindu, first of all, Vivek didn't say it, he was, it was brought up. So Vivek, and this is the short-term memory loss I was talking about earlier, Vivek never came out and said it until he was asked about it, and then all of a sudden he's like, listen, I'm proud of my Hindu faith. Really? Because you didn't mention it until fairly recently. We know what you're doing, dude. And I mean, it's like, you do you, and you know, I don't really care, but my point with Vivek is, like, the evangelical right is not going to vote for him in a primary. They'd vote for him over, just somebody rightly pointed out in the comments, they'll vote for him over Joe Biden. Eh, yeah. Some will. Some won't. Some will honestly look, there are some, well, and Joe, Joe Biden's Catholic, but there are some people who will not vote for Vivek Ramaswamy because he is not Christian. It's, I didn't. I didn't know Biden was Catholic. That makes so much sense. Well, Catholic. <laughs> Actually, no. I think Joe Biden is a fairly uh, regular Catholic. I don't know if devout, but I don't judge Catholics on their faith, as I'm not one. But anyway, you would almost say he's a preacher or a oh, priest. I'm done. See, this is an example of a person who is not okay. We disagree. That's fine. But us continuing to talk is not going to get anywhere. But anyway. Why He's time if someone makes a serious comment, I don't take them seriously and I make a joke out of it because half time they just want someone to fight with. Which is fine. I mean, I might retort a bit later and just be like, look, obviously we disagree. This is how I see it. You obviously disagree and that's fine. But I'm telling you how I see it. Th- this is how I see it. 
And this is how I believe the vast majority of middle America will see it. And half the time, those people give anecdotal evidence, you know, that doesn't really lead. Well, yeah, because he just said having interacted with him, he did the I have a black best friend thing. I've interacted with Hindus and attended to, he literally just said this, having interacted with Hindus, well, newsflash, asswipe, I've interacted with Hindus too, and not a one of them said Jesus. Um, and he went to a Jesuit school because that has anything to do with this, and having been to India, oh, I wonder where your bias may come from. You damn Jezebel. No, by the way, they have Muslims and Christians in India too, by the way. That's why I assumed Vivek Ramaswamy was a Christian because the way he was talking, I know there's a, like his parents. I thought his parents came here because they were Christian. I was like, cool. Makes sense. I don't know. That's yeah, that's that's still beyond me. Well, anyway, it doesn't matter because Vivek Ramaswamy is not going to win the primary. So. But anyway, back to the boring ass podcast. (laughs) Uh, you know what I mean? Like yeah, straight yeah. Republican or straight Democrat. Without doing any research at all. Pers- personal believe, policy. I can believe that somebody's majority Republican. Libertarian. Partially but. because the Libertarian candidate, his last name is Rainwater. That's, that's. Yeah, it's hilarious. Yeah. Well, it's not hilarious. It's like. A great fiction writer cannot come up with that. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to save Indiana with rainwater. Well, that and the running joke has always been, it's like, well, the government won't even let you collect rainwater. Well, he's also got um, big support because of the, uh, I I think it's complete legalization of marijuana in Indiana. That's what he's shooting for. That's what the libertarians have been shooting for for the longest time. But I, I saw a uh, sign in the yard today. It was for medical oh, use. Oh, like, oh, that's fine with me, too. Oh, my God. I have to share. He commented again, and I, oh, my God. You know when somebody proves your point by arguing with you? Yeah. Check this out. Watch his high school graduation speak, speech from St. Xavier's High School. It's on YouTube. You can tell he's a different kind of person who is seeing his religious faith as his own. Being surrounded by Christians and being the only Hindu, it's totally relatable to me that someone would interpret and reinvent religious doctrine that allows them to feel in sync with the substance of what people believe under the hood, whatever they call it, with different names. Did he basically, did he just say he's a Christian? He just said what I said. (laughs) I love when people do that. I'm not even, you know what, I'm not even going to respond. I'm just going to leave that right there, and anyone with half a brain will read that and go, you just made his point for him. That's what I'm saying. Oh, I'm not saying Vivek is a fake Hindu. I'm saying that Vivek is a Hindu who uses Christian language to be relatable to those around him. Yeah. That's, uh... I just, oh, fuck me. I just... So here's a fun fun fact about me. I'm constantly i don't mean clinical anxiety but whenever i get into comment discussions like that i do get a bit of anxiety because i don't want to say the wrong thing and i want to be sure of what i'm talking about before i say it but that breeds not necessarily that i think i'm wrong all the time but i'm concerned about being wrong i don't think i'm that smart and yet the world is constantly (laughs) invalidating that belief like (laughs) But I, I, I say this all the time. I say to work, I'm like, I'm not that goddamn smart. And I can do it. Like, Buddy, fuck. I've got something to tell you. Yeah. We've been in a freezer for 500 years. <laughs> <laughs> it's got electrolytes in it. <laughs> it. It really seems that way, doesn't it? What, that we've been in a freezer for 500 years? Uh, Like, seriously, like, all the people you deal with, they're like, fuck, they're not even real. They're NPCs. It it drives me wild. It drives me wild. It drives me insane. (laughs) Well, well, and there's just, there's been this really, really strange phenomenon. And, spoiler alert, I'm not a religious person. But it is ever so curious to me as to why there's so much you know, the topic now is moral equivalency. Well, there's a lot of religious equivalency, and the whole point of having different religions is because they're different. Why? Like, there are so many people that are trying to talk about things like, you know, they say, well, Judaism, uh, Christianity, and Islam all worship the same God. Well, yes and no. I mean, 
theoretically in the sense that it's the God of Abraham, but it's vastly different interpretations. So I guess in a way you could say they're worshiping the same God, but in another way, they're worshiping very, very different gods. And it's just, it it boggles the mind. Like Judaism and Christianity, I kind of see, they're, they're probably the most similar two of the world's religions that are, you know, as far as like being related. And then Islam is, don't get me wrong, Islam is definitely related. It's it's kind of the the stepbrother. <laughs> well, it's not the step, it's the brother. Um, and it's, it, it's just wild to me that people try to say things, like Vivek says, you know, it's like, you know, we're not so different. It's like, well, you kind of are, and that's not a bad thing, though. I mean, I don't care if we have a Hindu president. Frankly, I think the White House would look sick at Diwali. Trying to say that you're the same is almost cheapening the fact that you're different when it comes to Vivek, I mean. I don't know. That's completely unrelated to this podcast, but that's okay. If you've watched the show as long as we've been on by now, you know we take detours. Just a few. Just a smidge. But what am I talking We're talking about rainwater, and I was making the joke that uh, the libertarian candidate's last name is Rainwater, and that's classic comedy. <laughs> I've heard people say that Indiana is going to be the last state to legalize marijuana. No, not even close. No. That's going to be... Still hasn't, time. by the way. <laughs> nope. They're so deep in the hills right now. Yeah, but no, yeah they're trying to the make uh, CBD illegal. Legalized medical. Good know. luck. Yeah, yeah farm bill. I think it was Missouri. Yeah, I was pretty sure it was Missouri. I thought they'd legalize recreational. I guess I misread it, but Michigan... Yeah, Michigan was one. recreational. You would think insane. people would want... Just to state up. Well, but I think um, that has directly to do with Canada. Canada increased taxation, you know, for, or increased tax oh, how revenue was, from uh, how long ago? that cell. Oh, shit. I think that was in it's insane. Oh. I don't this was, was this podcast was three years ago. I'm pretty sure it was 2018. That's another thing I want to do on the podcast. I'm going to spew out a bunch of shit I may or may not be right about. So at the beginning of the next one, I'll report. That. Disclaimer. I did say we do not know what we're talking we about. Just a little bit. Experts. We just read some stuff every you know, it is quite hilarious how many people argue with us when our name is Average Intelligence Podcast. It's like you are literally sinking down to our level. And then the tired, worn out joke. <laughs> Below average intelligence. And it's like, you don't think we haven't thought of that? That's why we named it that. <laughs> like, geez, and that's why a chimp is our mascot. Again not saying they're stupid because they're not they're smarter than the most of you guys who don't get the joke but they're not pa- they're not going to pass the bar maybe a real estate exam i was going to say this ape has sold quite a bit of real estate i mean that's a real nice suit and look at that that ties straight and everything so i mean if you want to hang out see our pretty faces and whatnot have at it uh, no, no, I didn't know you paused it. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta take down the headphones. I, I, can, I can't handle my, uh, my feedback on my. I can hear you just fine. Oh, oh man, that is all that matters. And it's so much quieter in here <clears throat> with those headphones on. I'm, I'm fucking burning up. Yeah, Being hot during the podcast is a recurring theme. Joe I'm Jorgensen. Smart, I'm, I'm, well, I think she's brilliant. I think she's really smart. But like I said, I, I have my convictions. Like everyone else has their own personal convictions. I think this is before you talk to somebody from her campaign. Because I identify with I yeah, because I, I I know it wasn't her. It, was, it said her name, but I assumed it was a. Another disclaimer: I'm going to be quoting uh, Jordan Peterson a lot. No, I love Jordan Peterson. I love that guy. But anyway. I read his book, and if you haven't, it's amazing. You really I have not, and I've heard for life. That one. I want to read Maps of Meaning, but I don't have that one yet. Twelve Rules for Life is a lot shorter. Oh my gosh, dude! Take off the headphones and put them down already. <laughs> Pause real quick. By the way, I do want to just let the audience know this was prior to Jordan Peterson's Clinton like hospital stay where that's largely the only main issue I've had with him is the fact that he talks in his books and his lectures about, you know, uh, being mentally strong and not being dependent on pharmaceuticals. And then he got hooked on a pharmaceutical, which I get it. He was going through a very, very rough time by the sound of it. But I mean, in the whole practice, what you preach camp, I still love Jordan Peterson, but you know, nobody's perfect. Yeah, I was going to say, it's it's really easy to become addicted. 
oh yeah, hardcore. And like, I'm not, the only thing I'm taking away is from him is, and I think he's even actually, he's not changed his opinion on it, but he's kind of altered his wording a bit to make it a little bit more. Well, I mean, if you're going to be so heavy about something, you know, a decision, you know, like you should perhaps be able to have the, be able to say no, because I'm telling you right now, I, you know, like no matter what I could quit anything, like it doesn't matter. Could you quit women? <laughs> Shut up. I already did. <laughs> Got married. <laughs> <laughs> Don't post that. I'll go missing. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> no, ser- seriously, that would be a killer short. <laughs> oh, it's going to be. <laughs> Resume. <laughs> Resume. Yeah, this is where we lose the camera. Promotion. Promotion. Very, very soon. We lost it at uh, 13 minutes, dude. <laughs> but you know what is awesome? The Dr. Pepper. Because we started talking about it. We're like, hey, oh, oh no, yep, and this. Our video. Oh, shit. Cope pulled the funding. Our first fucking live stream, and we lost the camera. <laughs> well, what I. To an actual podcast. <laughs> but what's. <laughs> an actual podcast. The best part, though, is the fact that we were able to turn it into a joke because I said, you know what's. I don't know if you guys caught it. You said, you know what's awesome? I said, you know what's awesome? And you said Dr. Pepper. And then right after that, the camera feed cut off and you heard me say Coke pulled the funding. Hey, we're back on video. There we are. Hey. Hello, oh, Trey, I'm Phil Rusher. Hey. Might have preferred the monkey. <laughs> well, actually, wow, there, there is the monkey, so yeah. much oh, miscontext. Right. That's yeah. the greatest. I'm sorry. Yeah, but still, though, like, so that was I can't even problem. remember how I ended up. What? The clown getting it to work again well, no 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 it wasn't well, because it was no charged work. because oh, it okay. kept dying or it was dying people like the mo- people, people love monkeys oh hey like many things on our podcast we kind of figure the out the we figure it out and we st- and we stop asking questions we've come a long way we've i know a long way that was the point of this see this is pause it again i feel like that one got crickets or <laughs> the, the, <laughs> pause you son of a bitch anyway so people this just goes to show you um don't judge yourself on your first one yeah Uh, what wasn't she talking to specifically to obama uh, when she said it i don't remember but this is so boring Um, i I know right we we apologize early subscribers (laughs) thank you for your vote of confidence there weren't that many early subscribers though he is still oh. president until January, which I had to remind people. They're like, "Oh, if the election if the election's delayed, I'm like, well, that only really applies if the ele- if the election is delayed till after January 20th." But anyway, so, it took uh, like weeks after the freaking I already said Biden election ended, ended for it to like <laughs> finally <laughs> get results. Because literally, the first time Trump called him on his oh, phone, and you got to remember, <laughs> you got to remember though, because I, I said something very interesting there. This is pre January 6th, because this is before the election. That's wild. Oh, wow. Yeah, so we we did an episode on the day. You fucking called that. About the... (laughs) I didn't say... Well, I said if the election was delayed, it doesn't matter because he's president until January 20th. Oh, yeah. But there there was a kerfuffle with the election, though. The election itself wasn't delayed, but some of the results were. You know what might be, you know what might have been a better episode, which we might, you know what we should do. I don't know what day January 6th is on, but we should do this for that episode. Um, give me one sec. I will tell you. I was going to say, I'm looking it up too. So January 6th is a Saturday. So perfect. I say we do it. Yep. Now. Uh... Well, we can, we can record it and release it on January 6th. Well, I it's like, you want to talk about being presidential? You can't be in a room with Vladimir Putin and be like, oh, just be quiet. No. No. And that was what Tim Pool pointed out. He was like, I don't know. I watched that debate, and is Trump rude? Yeah. But I'd rather have somebody that was rude than somebody that's just going to be like, oh, but he's not letting me talk. <laughs> Can I do like a little bit? Yeah, well, they, they gave him 30 seconds when, he, when when Trump spoke for, like, what, 10? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if he got 30 seconds, yeah. but still, it's like, you know. Now, I'm, it's not unfair what you're doing to me. Because one of the things I did like, they were talking about health care. 
And Trump got called on it. He does not have a plan for no. escape. No, not at all. He still didn't. Well, the thing is, never did. Uh, you gotta kind of give him this, even if he had a, a plan. What are you gonna pass? He didn't need well, one. With, with that, the with the house being, because he didn't uh, even need to touch anything. He should have just mainly, the mainly Democrat. I don't know. Well, well yeah, but no, he doesn't probably. even have enough. I don't know if I agree with he didn't need one. I think it would have helped him a lot because he basically ran on getting rid of Obamacare, which resonated the with, with that was well, that it was fucking so it was it was I, I don't know, like it, it, Obamacare wasn't a uh, it was signed into law, correct? It, it was not. A, yeah, yeah, it was a law. Yeah, yeah exactly. So the, unfortunately, Trump wasn't able to get that done i mean he could have got it done within the first uh the first like as soon as he became president because it wasn't a republican house and senate i i believe it, there was Didn't a period they have all three uh, there was a period where i believe they did because i know a short period of time but they didn't get yeah. anything done like yeah i know because ben shapiro was complaining about that but i think where it hurt trump was you know getting rid of obamacare on its surface was helpful with like conservative Republicans, but more independent minded people like, like me, for example, I didn't like Obamacare, but I don't agree with this. But I think there were a lot of independents that were like, okay, I'm open to an alternative, but you actually have to have an alternative, mm -hmm. you know, and Trump never had that alternative. I don't think that would have necessarily saved him the election per se, but I think it would have helped. Couldn't have hurt, right? But like you said, you pointed out in the video that at the time he didn't have the Congress for it, so it was kind of irrelevant. And like you said, it's more of a legislative thing than an executive thing. But unfortunately, everybody there are people in this country who think the president makes laws. It is not the president's job to draft legislation. That is the job of Congress. It is not his job to come up with a health care plan. It's not Congress's job to come up with a health care plan. It's not. We have a free market economic system. And if you really want to get to the root of what's wrong with health care. Uh, I put up the headphones finally. And I will argue that point until I'm blue in the face. Free market will always flourish it better than less. Alone. Yeah, and the thing is, oh uh, gosh, the state mandates, the state, the state one. Yeah. If they get rid of that alone, yeah, and that I will help. Yeah, he's he's been trying, but the thing <laughs> so, oh my god, oh, one of, I'm gonna have a drinking game to that. So, I've, it's one of my personal annoyances. One of the bad parts about doing a podcast is you start to hear, especially when you edit the clips and shorts, you hear your your isms. And they annoy the living crap out of you. For example, and we both do this. We overuse, it's an American thing. We both overuse the word like insanely. And I actually make a conscious effort to not do it as much. But when you're in the middle and you're riffing, it's very difficult to not use it. And I try not to. And then I say various things like, here's the thing or st stuff like that. Here's the thing's a big one for me. Or now, I'll start a sentence like now, uh, and I hear it now, and I, uh. You know, all, all it really is is just a uh, time filler for your brain to catch up to get ready to say what you're going to say. Yeah, and actually, I hear a lot of... Rappers use that. Well, yeah, but I hear a lot of people... For example, Ben Shapiro doesn't have a lot of speech fillers, Jordan Peterson doesn't have a lot of speech fillers. Jordan Peterson does something that I actually really appreciate. He allows himself to take a moment to think. And, he answers. and that's, that's much more difficult than it sounds because dead air is scary when you're, especially when you're in front of a microphone, but it's yeah, okay. The way he locks in though. And he just like, he's just like, well, I'm, what I'm going to tell you. <laughs> well, you know, the thing of it is, is that he just I like him a lot, but he just always seems like he's on the verge of tears. Well, I go, <laughs> I go, you know, what's funny? I go back and forth with that about him, because on the one hand, there's this really weird thing. And I, I, I walk this tightrope a lot when it comes to describing masculinity. Right. So I think there is a. It's a not so fine line, but it's it's a defined line. So, for example, the example I always give is like if, if you're a 
if you're a heterosexual woman in America, for example. Those exist you, still? Yeah. <laughs> I thought they were she, he, they, it's. Little she, they, it's. Fits. Shits. <laughs> and giggles. It, I would assume that if you are a heterosexual woman, you would want in, in, a, in a male partner and a father, I would think, I would think that a heterosexual woman searching for a male partner would want someone who is not so emotionally out of control that a rough day at work would bring them to tears. But at the same time, I think that if you're a guy, if you're, if you're a man and let's say your father or mother dies and you don't shed a single tear, you might be a bit of a sociopath. Okay, maybe mother and father are a bad example because I didn't cry at my father's funeral. That happened. That hit me late. It was really weird. But like, yeah. let's say, see, I just used like, let's say, let's let's say that your child. I, this is a horrible example, and I don't wish it on anyone. But let's say your child died, and you don't shed a single tear. I think there's something wrong with you, clinically. Yeah, you're pretty much a little Dexter at that point. Well, you know, what's interesting about Dexter is he's aroused by blood, spurting blood. And that function of a vessel, an artery, is directly connected to male genitalia. So he is quite literally aroused by blood. I, I just don't understand why his voice is so like that. Some people have interesting vocal cords, man. I know. It's not just him. There's quite a few people. Um, what's that one band? They have other singers ridiculously high pitched, and they've got that one teenage dirtbag. Uh, you've heard the song. A teenage dirtbag, baby. <laughs> he like gets his voice really. His his natural voice is like very high, and he does the girl's voice in the yeah, song. Yeah, well, and I know, I know you. I don't think you know who this is, Chris Colfer. Uh, he was one of the main cast members on Glee. He just he was born with a very high pitched voice, and he actually is in a range that's more common. It's I believe it's called a countertenor, which is more common in females than males. But that's just his vocal range that he was born with. Now he could probably train it away, but why bother? That's his natural range, you know. So that's an example. But anyway, that, that, that's what everybody was saying. Like, oh, it's a good thing. It's like, how is that a good thing? Well, you're you're, you're system, penalizing for someone who can't afford something. Well, because the system crumbles if there is no individual mandate. Because if you can opt, I get it. The reason a system like that would work is because people cannot opt out. And I mean, sorry, folks, that's how insurance works. Except that when it's free market, <coughs> your insurance pools are smaller, and you can voluntarily opt in, meaning you can choose what pool you go your. Now, if you allowed the market to drive it, because pre-existing conditions is the big one, and I get it. Here's the thing. You're not going to have a perfect system. So what's you know with exactly what you're talking about? This is a really um, good with the uh, this is where they what is it? Uh, we were just talking about this the other day. Um, all the poison in our foods. You know, yeah. and like did did you see some of the comments on, on that video? Yes. You know, and exactly what you're talking about because it was the healthcare video. And you're talking about healthcare right here. And I, I literally now, like, I mean, yeah, I've, I've always been conscious of health, but like, I, mean, I really am now for some reason. And then I'm just sitting here listening to this and I'm like, you know, you, you didn't mention uh, clean eating because we weren't even on that really yet. We just, you know, calories in, calories out. Well, I mean, we we kind of were, and well, like chemicals in the food, and, and, and you know, and how this certain type of food, you know, uh, messes with your fluctuation of hormones, you know, control your hunger and hormone, hunger hormones. What is it? Lep, uh, ghrelin and leptin are your, are your two hunger hormones. One shuts off hunger, one starts hunger. The more you know. Is the immediate threat with healthcare, is it cost or is it um, coverage? String the thought together. Come on. Um, I would make the argument that it's cost. Because guess what? If you can afford to pay for something out of pocket, you do not need insurance. No. And here's the thing. Again, it God. It took me about 30 minutes to get homeowner's insurance. Well, and that's, I, that's because... And I, because homeowner's insurance is actually insurance. 
because insurance is this little thing where you pay into a pool and you're basically buying peace of mind. But if shit hits the fan, They've they got will you give back. you money. Yep. But the reason insurance works... You got a roof, didn't you? No, I'm just not health insurance. Oh my God. Every, every, every single drug should be illegal and sold, you know, because the thing is, you can tax everything to a point. I think there are some some substances that should be illegal. Obviously, I'm not talking like homegrown meth. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know if I said illegal or illegal. Marijuana, absolutely. It sounds like I said illegal. I think it's the you catch that? Well, I don't know if you. Uh, I don't know if you made the distinction between legal and illegal, but you said legal. You thought they should all be legal. Oh, yeah. I changed my stance on that because uh, they, where was it? They did make all the drugs legal. and Now it's like a wasteland. I, I can't remember where it was. I, I believe it was, it was in Canada somewhere. Well, Van- Vancouver, I don't know if they made them all legal. No. It might have been Vancouver. No. Well, they it, didn't make it's... all of them legal, but they made like a lot of them legal. They, what, what they had, I, I, I got educated on this by uh my uh my new buddy justin spur who lives in vancouver what they have is safe injection sites for uh i got yeah heroin heroin so what that is is basically if if you're a heroin addict you can go there and get safe safely injected but they also have resources to help you quit oh dude i forgot to tell you scooby got skunked oh yeah how'd you take care of that i'm still trying (laughs) Uh, supposedly, if you take peroxide, baking soda, and dish soap, you know certain ratios. Um, I know which ratios. I'm just anyway. I thought so it was. We, I thought it was oatmeal. You can do that. You can do oatmeal. You can do tomato. Whatever. I don't, I don't know. You know, but like, it's it's not working. Well, this is actually so the bad. this is actually the perfect segue. Sponsorship. That was fucking weird. Because while it won't help clean your dog, it will cover up their skunky ass scent. Stevie Wicks candles. And guess what, guys? The Black Friday sale is has been on since Monday. So if you don't know about it, you've still got a few more days because it's running until Monday. Because I forgot we recorded this one. We're not doing it live. But as you can see, Christmas candles are now available on the site and are part of the Black Friday sale. So get off your ass. Press pause, go to steviewicks.com and get your discounted candles and then your, your, your Christmas shopping's done. And for our Jewish friends, Shalom, we have Hanukkah candles as well, which I believe, no, Hanukkah hasn't started yet, but it's soon. So again, get off your ass. And now back to the podcast. The tax on marijuana alone with him doing that too. And also, did you, uh, did you, why do you uh, think California legalized it? Oh Yeah. But I mean, that white when California they did that, I was like, well, there goes their... And, Dan, I will give California credit. <clears throat> it's like, I said, well, there goes their deficit. Wrong. Nope. <laughs> they found a way. That's one they, thing. They miss me their really money good so at bad. Yeah, they're spending. really good at deficit. And Republicans are good, too. Yeah. Federally. Absolutely. Yeah, they definitely know how to spend. I they, mean... Uh, they spend, they spend just... Well, probably not just as much, but they're close. They're not, they're not innocent. <laughs> Um, they spend it on different stuff. At least they spend. We'll say at least you know some of what they spend on. You know, I just said that Tom actually Tom makes Tom sense. Tom you know, so if uh, he gets in and you know they legalize marijuana, the surplus from uh, the taxes from that alone will fund so much. And honestly, just like we were talking about earlier, how schools are funded and whatnot, like you know, underfunded. Well, now it's really it's really goofy, and it's I think because of horrible. Uh, spending i mean well, uh, it's, it's horrible spending and it's also it doesn't make any sense so a lot of that money gets sent federally and then it gets redistributed to the states oh this is where i go with my distribution is tax big flipping big one. so i'm going to present an idea i came up with years ago and if any elected officials ever listen to this Uh-oh. feel free to steal this uh-oh what you okay. well, see no it. this is a good idea so right now if you look anybody <laughs> you look at, your out of you. At the year, look at your you're paying the most money goes to federal and then state, and then uh, county, or municipality, depending on what state you're in and how they divide it, if you have income tax. So but let's assume for a minute that every state and every municipality has income tax, just for shits and giggles. Flip that ratio. So the bulk of my money, under, under my idea, the bulk of your money you pay in income tax would go to your local municipality, or city, or county, or however it's divided. 
than the next amount, so your state would probably be about the same. But I guarantee you, if you did this, your state taxes would go down because it's not being funneled to the federal government first. Mm. And it's staying within your state. That's a good idea. And then the least amount of money you pay in taxes goes to the federal government. Because think about it. It's just an issue of scale. You know, if there's 320... I'll even... I'll even downplay it. Let's Politicians say steal it. Million taxpaying Please. Citizens. Well, Andrew Tate... He's not touching on this politically, but he said something, which is, it's good advice if you're trying to make money, but honestly, the government's very good at it, is whenever he was talking about making money, he said, you find a path that money's going along and you get in front of it. And you're able to intercept some of that money. That's exactly what funneling tax dollars to the federal government and then having it distributed to the states and then to the local areas. That's exactly what that does is it's just these people getting in front of the money. That's all it is. It's just to line their pockets. I'm thoroughly that's, convinced because you can't tell me it's more uh, efficient. That's genius, though. Like, wherever the money's going, <laughs> get in front of it. Like, you could literally do that. You could use that just for a, a normal daily thing, you know? Like, figure well, out. <coughs> that's I'm how... Finance guru like them. <laughs> that's, how, that's how Tate was doing it. <laughs> or using it rather but what i'm saying is that's what the federal government does explain to me why as a taxpayer why my tax dollars go to the federal government to then get funneled back to my state to then get funneled to my school district when i could just be taxed at my local level and have that money go to my the school district that i live in and we have absolute knowledge of where it's being spent exactly because guess what? If you got a problem with the way your school district is doing business, you can go and bitch. And we can we can uh, get rid of you state statewide easier if you're a corrupt politician. Ah, exactly. But it's easier to make those. It's easier to effectuate change at the local level, and it's also now easier to end up on an <clears throat> FBI watch list. Oh, you saw that they released the January six tapes. I know you did because I saw you post it. Like, oh, my God. And, 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 you know, and the funny thing is, I've been saying the entire time, I'm like, it really wasn't a huge deal. Like, and I was saying that, you know. Well, it was. I remember that. I was just like, I know it was a big deal. And, you know, they shouldn't have been, been, they shouldn't have went inside. When they opened up the doors, they should have known. Well, no, I don't have an issue. Uh, I don't have an issue when they open up the doors. My issue was, because there were, like, I'm not going to lie. People there, blocking them. Well, you're talking about that. I'm talking about the when people were smashing windows and actually getting physical with cops at the barricades, which did happen. There's uh, video actually, of that too. One of the cops flashed a badge, and they, they 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 have a they have a still shot of it. I don't know if I sent it to you or not, but there's a there's a cop that had his badge. He was holding it like this to a camera. But you you know what he was wearing? You know what he was wearing on his head? One of these. And he had a whole ensemble, and he looked like one of the January 6th rioters. But yeah, he was showing his fucking badge to the uh, the the camera so they would let him in. <coughs> um, so you know, there's... And I don't know if it's 100%, you know... No, no, it is, it is, it is. It could be, it it is. Could be some, I know, but it could be someone with a fake badge. Well, no, there it's was... No, 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 it's, it was real. There was... Uh, Tucker did an interview with the... Uh, the former chief of Capitol Police, and oh, he had, okay. he is. had, he had, he had officers in civilian clothes in the crowd. But so no, this, that was, this wasn't like just a civilian clothes. They, they, they was dressed up as. I, I know they were plants. They were, they were plants in the audience. That's that's. I, I've been saying this from the get go. I was like, dude, it's fishy. It's no, no, no. I mean, they were they this this is done at just about every big event you can think of. There are usually cops in street clothes, and street clothes in that instance would include MAGA hats. And the cop may have been a MAGA fan, for all I know, because usually they're just told, hey, wear, wear street clothes, blah, blah, blah. But the, what I'm talking about, because there were people that were bashing indoors and people that were, you know. That's what I meant also by plants. I was actually agreeing with you with plants, like, you know, like the people that were bashing windows. How do we know for a fact who they are, what they, you know, because some of the people who were bashing windows and, you know, some got away and didn't get in trouble at all and got let off. I don't know. It's just weird. Like, I just, I like to run with conspiracy theories. <laughs> and it was a shit show. I was watching it live. Now, granted, what you weren't being shown on the television was what the tapes that have been released, where it's 
cops letting people in and showing them around and it was not. But then there's also the image of them barricading the door in the Senate chamber, which also happened. So, and I, I believe I say on the January 6th episode, there's a shot that somebody took a photo of that, that I guarantee that I need to check and see if that's ended up in history books yet. It will. I promise you. I mean, if you spent money in my Congress, you've been bankrupt five minutes into this podcast. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't and afford we, my mic. And we can't even print our own money because that's a felony. <laughs> yeah, right, but they was, can do it. I thought this was America, damn it. <laughs> I thought this was America. Speaking of which, did you know that the Secret Service was first uh, created to fight counterfeiting? They were not presidential bodyguards when they were first. Uh... Well, yeah, because, I mean, we didn't... Uh, we didn't have a whole bunch of people around, you know, for them to just like come and just assassinate a president. Well, no, I think we had presidents that would shoot a motherfucker back. Yeah, that's true. Because wasn't it Teddy Roosevelt that got shot and <laughs> they shoot back? <laughs> no, he didn't shoot back. Oh no, Andrew Jackson, he didn't shoot back. He tra- He ran after the fucker and beat the shit out of him. What? I didn't. I didn't know that. It's like li- a little tip in American history. He ran and beat the shit out of the guy. He ran and beat the fuck out of him. He done R U N N O F T. Who had a speech in his pocket? Anyway, oh, he's fantastic. Okay. Matrix, dude, get out of here. He's, he's <laughs> All right, this is a solo okay. podcast now. The, the uh, co-host uh, that has been shot. No, she's <laughs> call for backup. <laughs> call for backup. I never heard that. Oh, oh, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be interesting if we found out that like people who think they see ghosts and stuff, if we found out that those were actually in, extra dimensional aliens, like you. Oh yeah, absolutely. That that honestly <laughs> aliens. Wouldn't that that'd be such a buzzkill for people? Listen here, motherfucker. You were just <laughs> talking about extra dimensional aliens. You uh, shit bird. Let me tell you something, shit bird. They seem <laughs> liberal and left. Oh right, these are it, not the same thing. Yes, <laughs> I just uh, said right when you said left. Say left nowadays. We are specifically talking about uh, left, right, right. right. <laughs> you know, because, and you uh, called Peterson back in the day and uh, Democrats and back a in the day, liberal. They weren't. I I still can. Well, okay, maybe not now. Would you say? Yeah, I was gonna say he, he's a he's a Christian conservative, isn't he? Well, I would still consider him classically liberal in the sense that he believes in free speech. He believes in free market economics. The stuff that is now attributed to the right used to be. Yeah, it's it's gotten all confused. Yeah, so I would still consider it. Although he is leaning more conservative, and by his own admission. He is leaning more conservative now, more religious conservative, too. Check out Ben Shapiro's... Uh... Yeah, but of course Ben Shapiro's going to say that. Yeah, he's... I'm the big lie, the big switch, or whatever you call it. Yeah, they're it's like, like, wait, I thought What's true? Were... I swear no, it's happening like, again. You right. No, not necessarily. <laughs> it really is. ...cases that happened in Britain, and this has been recent. This has been within the last couple of years. The first one being Alfie Evans. You'll probably I think it's just this. some people wake up and um, realize morals. Illness, but again, this is all... You can Long story short, um, baby, uh, baby, was, baby was born in Britain, had tons of complications. Turns out he had some sort of, of super rare neurological condition. They wouldn't let him come to the United States. Oh, it gets worse than that. I remember this. Okay. So uh, they were they were treating him. That story was fucked up. But then the national. I Army bring it up all the time. To uh, disconnect. He ended up dying, didn't he? Yeah. That baby, and I say baby because he was less than two years old. I think when he died, he was one year, 11 months or something like that. That baby lived for five days off of that ventilator, and then he died. Now, in between that time, the parents tried multiple times to get the court, the court, yes, I said the court, meaning the judicial body, of the government that should not be governing the health care they appealed several times to get them to lift their decision and then they tried to seek treatment in the united states they were not allowed to move the child um the father had an audience with the pope and the pope supported this the baby the child was granted italian citizenship so that he could immediately be let into italy to receive treatment so fun fact i did not know this at the time but 
Do you remember the uh, the new president of Italy, Giorgia Maloney? Mm-mm. Well, the the conservative Christian who was being called the next uh, Mussolini. Oh yeah yeah yeah. She's the one that granted Alfie Evans Italian citizenship. And then the the UK go- the Brit government wouldn't let him. Yeah, they wouldn't let him leave. But he he technically he died an Italian citizen. Or with Italian citizenship. But that was Georgia Maloney. So, at the very least, she may not agree with her politics, but she put her money where her mouth was before she was even president. So, when, some, when a government has the opportunity to be malevolent, they will be malevolent. Damn, Jake's here dropping freaking truth bombs. Oh, man, I was livid when I read that story the first time. I know, but the oh, whole yeah. excerpt right you there know, was like, you know, go, go, legit. You know, it was legitness. Go, this isn't healthcare, but if you want to see where socialism leads, literally every time, Google the kulaks. But it's okay because you know I I only understand healthcare <clears throat> from an American perspective. So whenever I hear anything different, I just assume that it's through an American lens and therefore inferior. I mean, literally. And then Jordan Peterson does a much better job outlining this in his lectures in his book. I'm not doing it justice, so I'm giving the condensed version. Long story short, um, you know, the communist commissars come into town. They find all the people who were worthless and bitter and, you know, had no money. And they told them, well, these people stole it from you. Stole it from you. They stole the wealth, which is preposterous. They were good at what they did. So they made money. Imagine that. Back when it wasn't a sin to refer to it as the and Ukraine. The food. And, yeah. then to top it all off, and the capital was pronounced Kiev by everyone in the West. From the fields. Before they gaslit everybody. Today. Yes. And the funny thing <coughs> is. Venezuela. I mean, you know, uh, imagine, imagine if that came to America. How many of these people that stop in at McDonald's, Taco Bell, you know, any of that. Do they know how to make their own food? Do they know how to grow their own food? No, Do they know how to no. go out hunt? No. I mean, and I'll be honest. I, I've never hunted a day in my life. No. And I guys, can fish. I'd guys, eat fish. Guys, Everyone needs to just uh, think a little bit more. You that's know, why like, you should go back and watch all the old episodes, everybody. Help us get that watch time up. Going this way. And they're, they're going to be like, oh, well, I mean, it sounds good well, in theory. Well, the frustrating thing is I can understand why people felt this way and say, you know. Oh, God, Cuba. Cuba was horrible. Well, I mean, let's be real. There's so many people swam in open ocean on makeshift rafts. Oh, rafts Cuba? To yeah. You mean Trudeau Senior? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so wonderful. Bernie went there. I mean, do you remember him saying, bread lines are good. Well, it's good. Yes, Standing in line for food is good. good. Because people get food. It's like, well, I... I don't have to stand in line for bread. It's here. like stand in line at a grocery store or stand in line to yeah, get. Yeah, you think we'd love that? We'd get pissed off if there's three people in a line. And we'd go, there's not a fast pass? Where's all the fucking cashiers? <laughs> I got shit to do. Game's on. Shit. The ticker cheers. Bernie, I think he genuinely cares, but he just. I was going to say, I feel I feel the same way about Bernie as I do about AOC, and I believe that. I do believe their hearts are in the right place. They, just, they need to read some... No, they're not. Their hearts are in yeah. the wrong place. And I still believe that they started out that way. Genghis Khan. Thank you. Or is it Genghis? It's debatable. It's... I've more academic. Gangnam style. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> no, I mean, uh, you said old boy was uh, having trouble uh, getting, you know, laid. And he literally fathered, like, 80,000 children or something. I don't know if that's true or not. But I, think, I think the estimates are something about, like, 8% of... Bro, that dude was putting it work. Eight percent of males in Asia carry like at least some of those. Like I like to bust on that like any other guy. Damn, son. that dude think, was I think, busy. So, I think conservative. He was busy. Are, like somewhere he was working. Younger, like single generation, eight hundred offspring. How did he have time to do anything else? Like that dude had to be. Like, he, he's a minute man. I guess. <laughs> I mean, he like he fought battles, <laughs> like he was there. Yeah, and that, that that's the thing, man. You know, back in the day, like that dude was late for the parlay with Rome at one point. He's like, "Where's, where's Khan at?" He's like, "Oh, he'll he'll just be a minute. <laughs> <laughs> be out in a minute." Dude, 
shit. I, I bet that dude had to eat constantly. Oh my god. All right. We, well, we got sidetracked again. I just. <laughs> I just made the exact same joke three years later. <laughs> at the same time. Well, I mean, Biden has you know a lot of friends in China. You know. And so. the Ukraine. Yeah, and the Ukraine, and uh, so and his son Hunter has I'm, uh, friends I'm in Moscow. Skip, I'm gonna skip ahead to the whole Ukraine. You know, I don't. I don't think the travel ban down, did any good anyway. Never it I didn't. Don't read, it's still, it's still uh, transmitted. Like physical newspaper. I'll read articles Twelve online. monkey style. I was in a Starbucks and I was waiting, and there's a USA Today, and I'm just going through it. On page six, there's this little blurb about how Hunter Biden is going to work for the largest natural gas company in the Ukraine. Right after we get into a tiff. With Russia over Dude, I forgot how legit that microphone <laughs> little setup was. <laughs> like, oh yeah, <laughs> looks like a podium so mic. <laughs> it's the yeah. same mic I have. And this is just well, after I'm not using currently, but happens to become the largest exporter of natural gas in the world, which was great. I find it more than a little suspect that the son of the sitting vice president becomes head of an international company that deals in natural gas for a country that is at odds with arguably our largest, I don't even know how you would say it. I don't want to say adversary because that implies that we're hostile, but I, our biggest rival, I guess. Which, stage, clarification like, statement, Hunter Biden wasn't the head, but he was on the board. Do I think he got money? Like 20. Damn right I think he got money. Do I think he spent it on illegal hookers? Damn right I think he did. Do you think he spent it on cocaine? Was this pre-laptop? No. With, yeah. Uh, Biden. It was it pre-laptop yeah, on public television. Yep. Saying. Oh, yeah, yeah, I can't yeah. remember. I, I told him. I said, if you don't. Fire well, no, him, actually, no, 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 no. The, 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 the laptop day. was actually during getting... Trump's presidency. Yeah. So this is leading into the 2020. So yeah, this is not pre-laptop, yeah. but it was before it really got blown open. It was kind of rumor at this point. Because this was, I don't remember what month it is, but I think it was in the month of October. You know what? No, this might have been pre-laptop. Hang on. Because when did that New York Post article get taken off Twitter? I'm, fair, I'm fairly certain it was uh, It was in Trump's presidency. You know what? This might have been pre-laptop. Yeah, because, okay, so there's an article talking about how Twitter, un- this is from October 31st, 2020, Twitter unblocks accounts for New York Post, uh, which claims victory and standoff over Biden stories. Now, it said they had a 16-day ban. Oh, no, there it is. The social network on October 14th blocked users from tweeting the unconfirmed New York Post article. So this was pre-laptop story breaking in the New York Post. Damn, and here I am talking about it. Calling shit. 27, no law varying the compensation Now, now I see why we start to have people drop off at this point in the podcast. It was a that sucks. It, well, no, that's a good. Thing. We've, we've learned. learned we've if you don't yeah, learn. we've we've gotten good at knowing when to that, cut that's off. Basically saying, what, are we, what are we gonna do next time? I I think we should. Uh, we don't even have to do it live next time. We can just record like and cut it up. Live is pretty cool. Live live is pretty cool. Live is cool. Raw, yeah. raw, Monday Night Raw, raw. <laughs> Sensor. It's you, gonna be great. It's gotta be huge. <laughs> huge, huge and raw. Raw. <laughs> <laughs> Average watch time: forty-one minutes. I didn't say I didn't. I didn't restrict the viewers, so you know, under eighteen can watch this. So, yeah, so we are nice. talking about winky face up yeah, in the yeah, right. Fine. And then our latest video pops up. All right. Well, yeah, look at that good thumbnail. I'm super so proud of that thumbnail. Yeah. But we have thick skin. So That's legit. Yeah, we uh, we have really thick skin. We do have really thick skin. Holy crap, man. Man. Well, yeah. so that was... It was a blast from the past, man. You know, I had some notes, but overall, once we got into the groove, it really wasn't too bad. But what did you think, America? I think we've come a long way. And now we're in 4K. Yes. Now, now you can see my unfinished 
room. <laughs> Which Zoom Zoom finally updated my settings for the 4K HD video. Finally. Yeah, I was gonna say it looks it looks pretty decent. It looks good on my in my camera, but I mean obviously it's because I'm sitting here. Well, little Thanksgiving treat for you guys. But I am tired and I'm going to sleep. So go right have now. go have I'm going to sleep right now. <laughs> What is what is that little Nikki sleep? You got it. <laughs> I forgot about that. You got it. Yeah. Why is that funny? I don't know. Juice uh, priests, maybe. <laughs> so anyway, grab your leftover turkey, light your Stevie Wicks candle, and uh Enjoy your peppermint schnapps and Popeye's chicken. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> and have yourselves a safe and happy holiday. Um, fuck off. <laughs>